Okay, some say that clean technology is uh, very key um, uh, for being able to implement all the necessary uh, technical uh, issues related to climate change. Particularly developing countries uh, come and argue that they will only make this step forward towards climate change if they can, if developed nations can ensure technological transfer. Others say they can only make the step forward if there is financial support for them to make that move. And others say that well, political will is the mo the key uh, or the most important ingredient to that is needed to address the challenges of climate change. The Earth Charter Initiative uh, believes uh, <coughs> that an important component within that is the ethical dimension in order to achieve a higher level of shared vision and international cooperation to be able to address the challenges of climate change. How important do you think is ethics to the success of uh, climate change negotiations and the implementation of that? And how can this ethical dimension be better reflected in treaties such as the Copenhagen one? It is also a matter of application of an ethical value, an ethical principle into a choice. Uh, if you would be a purist ethically, but politically it will be very difficult, but anyway, I think it is a value in itself. You could, for instance, take the position that each individual person on the earth um, should have exactly the same space uh, to emit CO2, a cap per person, equally for a poor landless farmer in India and a rich um, consumer in, uh, in my country. At the moment, the, rich land, the, the poor landless farmer in India hardly hardly mm -hmm. any CO2 emission mm -hmm. and it's many tons per year, uh, thousands of tons per year uh, for somebody in Holland. Um, equal means that perhaps, yes, not perhaps, that the landless farmer in India and millions of others would have to be able to emit much more than today. But others would have to go down. Right. Um, contraction and convergence. Sure, there's contraction and convergence in the in the jargon. Um, now, that will polit politically not be possible, not be acceptable uh, because of the present power rate. But I think it is important to keep that in mind as an ideal. Yes. So you have to go into that direction. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have not met that objective of equality. You have, you're not yet ready. You have failed. Yes? Right. Uh, yes, you have to move into that direction. That's the ethical dimension. No. So politically, it's not politically it's not possible at this moment because Be of the powers. Yeah, because and power. Place, but equitably and ethically, it's important to yeah. think about these issues. Definitely, you have to equitable distributions of the yeah. limits uh, yeah. of emissions of CO2. Yeah. And you shouldn't leave the ethical thinking then only to those poor in developing countries who want to emit more, but you have to do that also yourself if you are belonging to a social class in the North, uh, which has to admit less. One of the big things which is necessary in many different uh, respects, uh, climate change, but also power and, uh, and trade, is that the rich have to step backwards. Have to step backwards, have to do less in many respects. Uh, because inequality perhaps is the major problem. Uh, in many dimensions, in many domains of, of development, the climate change is one of those. Now, how to do that is very difficult, but you have to give an example perhaps. So if you are an activist, if you are politically active in the North, I think you have to show that you are willing to retreat, to use less. Uh, it has consequences for your own consumption behavior. Mm -hmm. You have to argue for this, but you have to set an example also. Um, but as a government, 
you have to design policies which enable the country as a whole to cut, really to cut. To, um, no, because you cannot only leave it to individual consumers. There is a lot of emission due to production, to the production of, of course, also of energy, also the production of meat. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, so, so to trade and transportation more than just individual material consumption. So you have to change production and distribution modalities sector by sector. Uh, now then you need international agreements because it is difficult for an individual country to do this because it will put itself uh, at a disadvantage in an international trade situation whereby other countries are not doing so and that's why you need these international agreements with as many as possible countries. Mm -hmm. So the US has to be part of an international agreement because it will be difficult in the long run to have a major international agreement with major economic consequences because the economic consequences are major without the US because they are 30% of the world economy mm -hmm. still. Huh? So you need them. You need them, and, the, and I think it is also unethical of the U.S. to use its power as an individual country and to stay aside, and to try to to dominate, and and they say we think this, and you have to follow us. And you are part of the world economy. You are part of the United Nations. Um, so that that's a call on them. Now that does not mean that everything ought to be done by governments, definitely a lot. I think the market can do a lot, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. But the, the Kyoto, society. The, the market, society. economic, no, the market, you can, you can you, if you have a level playing field mm -hmm. on the market, uh, you can do a lot. Give an example. If, for instance, governments would decide together that a car cannot emit more than a specific tiny uh, CO2 uh, emission, so much less than today, and if they would take the decision, yeah, companies will follow, they will do it, they will find the technology, they will find the cars, mm -hmm. they will, everything is technologically possible, but they only will do so if they know that there is no false competition. Mm -hmm. yes? uh, so you. So you, you can create an enabling environment as governments worldwide for private business and then you can leave it to the market to do the job. Uh, yes. You can do that for, for combustion uh, uh, manufacturers, uh, for, for agriculture. You, mm -hmm. you can set rules, but they ought to be of a level playing field and given that level playing field you can rely a lot of technological innovation and on the market. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, it's all in the Kyoto Agreement. Uh, and there is a lot of talk in the moment about giving up the Kyoto Agreement and starting anew. I think that is unwise, because the Kyoto Agreement has compartments, chapters, niches for each and every approach. It is extremely flexible. The difference between the Kyoto Agreement and the approaches before Kyoto was that before Kyoto it was voluntarily. Mm. And after Kyoto there was an international treaty, which means obligations and some sanctions. If you would not meet the obligations, sanctions are very meager, but for the first time sanctions in the field of international environmental uh, policy making. Please do not go back to a voluntary approach, because a voluntary approach means because it failed in the 90s, it is not going to happen, it's not going to happen, and you create inequality mm -hmm. between countries.